Welcome to the sixth episode of Blood and Talkness, a Hades speedrunning podcast set in a nightmare world where you can never find Flood Flare and you are forced to take Slicing Flare in the following room. I couldn't read for a moment. I'm Rist and I am officially washed. I'm saying this is a chill guy and I'm officially on vacation. Hello, I'm Webs to be, and I don't run this fucking game. And our guest today has many faces, and none of them human, all of them incredibly handsome. The creamy, speedy dream, Vareem. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Hello. Yeah. I mean, you may not be thanking us. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, right, and uh, for gameplay, we have uh, Satan. Who is popping off uh, right now, by the way. Absolutely. <laughs> Looking at a great run so far. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You know, this is a this is an update that I didn't really expect Supergiant to have the guts to put out, which is uh, replacing all their assets, changing up the gameplay, and uh, yeah, for such a small team, they is. really they really pulled it off in very little time. Kind of out of the blue, uh, it changes the landscape of how the game is ran. But you know, yeah. we're we're runners; we've been here before. I think we'll be able to adapt. Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's. Uh, I guess we'll walk ourselves directly into Hades news, of which there's, I feel like there's simultaneously, simultaneously been a lot of and not very much of. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, the most recent thing, um, at least on top, off the top of my head and on my notes here, of course, is the speed gaming, <laughs> the speed gaming race that we had. Uh, when was this? Was this a week or? A week ago or two weeks ago? I can't remember now. I'm not sure what time is anymore, to uh, be frank. Same. I've, I've been losing track. It was in the past, and it definitely happened. Me and Satan were there to commentate. Uh, Webs and Vareem and Dunko were racing, and uh, yeah. Webs came out ahead. <laughs> it was a week ago today. I had to go back to the group a week chat ago today. to uh, check oh, dates. Uh, yeah. Whoa. It was the 21st. Oh. Dude, time flies. It does not feel yeah. like it's been a week. Yeah, <laughs> not does it even feel like yesterday, bit. or does it feel like two years ago? It feels like two years ago. <laughs> Same. That said, that was uh, that was a really fun event. That was a really good race. Absolutely, it was, it was fun for, for two people. It definitely was. Yeah, for me and Rest in peace, don't go. For those that didn't get the catch, Webs came out ahead. Vareem in a very close second, and then poor, poor. Poor Dunk got <laughs> as Dunk lucked as he possibly could have, I think. Only um, three sacks. The only three sacks, only saw fans. It was it was pain. There was a lot of pain. We we had the two to three sack range, so he could have gotten a two sack, but mm -hmm. didn't he get for reamed as well? Didn't he get for reamed on Hera or something? Yes, he certainly yes, he did. did. <laughs> yeah, ended up with Athena cast Hera though. A, a, oh, a classic yeah. that doesn't really work anymore because they fixed blinding flash <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh wait oh but he did get parting shot out of tartarus i remember that yes that was pretty pogged he, he tried his best to make it work <laughs> but yeah, and, I, me and I, webs were separated by like less than 30 seconds if i remember right so yeah it, it was, was a like, 15 second difference yeah. yeah it was insane i although i guess i have a kind of a mind like yours for Eames. so so when we when we did uh gdq you said uh i'm kind of hoping that something does go wrong because it'll be a nice showcase of what haiti speedrunning is like <laughs> and i think that the speedrunning event uh, the speed gaming event really helped showcase that as well you know three really good players uh two neck and neck and one just lagging behind by five minutes <laughs> yeah. it was just kind of the a whole spectrum of the experience summed up in a single race. I think yeah, that's, as... that's that's how oh. racing uh, how racing this game currently goes. I'm excited for um, we'll talk about it a bit later, I think. But yeah. um, for for mod progress to um, to really close yeah. that gap and make races more likely to be close, the way that they, we've locked into them being a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> They've definitely been close more than I've expected. Yeah, for sure. races. Yes. I will say racing luck is really interesting. And 
I think sort of the fun thing about Hades Racing Luck is it only actually matters the second the race has any stakes on it whatsoever, right? So, like, we're able to get away with, like, unmodded, for fun community races on the weekends, right? Mm. And, like, yep. lightly modded... Um, relays. Relays. Yeah, exactly. But the second you start to get to, like, Hermes Cup and something mm-hmm. that'll be coming up here soon... It where there's like actual stakes of money or you know fame or anything, just any stakes <laughs> whatsoever. Well, there there is certainly like a Hermes Cup effect, right? You you pride. become yeah. There's pride. You your name gets a lot more known. People put a lot of Hermes people Cup. put a lot of time and effort into preparing for these like yeah. pre- more prestigious events, mm-hmm. right? And so prestige. That's yeah. what we're asking for. Thank you. <laughs> so so it's so it's unfortunate that um you know we don't quite have a mod in place that, that we would like, but but I think we're getting closer. Hopefully. Yeah, I can't yeah. believe I got ninth place by those chuckle fucks. <laughs> yeah, we, we left first round of qualifiers, and I was like, dang, Riss is a shoe-in, let's see if he makes it out of round one, and then he's like ninth seed. Uh, exactly too far. <laughs> absolutely insane. Uh, Shoutouts to everyone that qualified, the times were absolutely sick. Yeah, Hades runners are getting good. We're getting a lot of like the the newer crop of runners are are starting to get more RTA experience, and I think it's really showing. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that comes from a a, a lot of them. It just did uh, like speaking for Anake specifically, and I think this is a case for a lot of the new runners. They d- went hard on a lot of IGT categories, and that translates very well into like RTA. You know what I mean? Aside oh from, yeah, like, absolutely. It, it does a good only... job preparing you. Definitely. Yeah, it, sure. it gives I, you a really good, like, solid basis of what to look for. Um, yeah, I found, then... I found personally that doing IGT practice runs to help like prime my mm-hmm. decision making was actually like a really important step in in progressing my ability as an RTA player as well. So, oh, definitely, it makes a lot of yeah. sense. And then you got chuckle fucks like me and Austin that just jumped right into <laughs> RTA, and it took us a lot longer to get good, but yeah, we got there eventually. I... I regret not spending a lot more time in R- in IGT, but I don't know, man. RTA looked so much more sick to me, yeah. and I I spent my time. I I I did you my duties. Rail. Yeah, you know, I did what I had to do in IGT, and I burnt myself out on it. And <laughs> RTA was just a lot more fun. For anyone me, who anyone who's been to my stream at any point knows that. Uh, I value swag above all else in speedruns, and so True. looking cool is way more important <laughs> than actually going fast. Yeah, Absolutely. what's the point of yeah. speedrunning if you're not looking cool? known sick. for disregarding speed for looking cool <laughs> 100% of the time. <laughs> Unlike Musaeus, who is extremely uh, serious and straightforward and never messes around in his speedruns. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. For that, sure. that, that man goes fast. Did you see recently he achieved haste of Hermes? <laughs> What? <laughs> he got twenty percent dodge chance with the Lambent Plume. Insane. Uh, oh, that is God, quick. really? Yeah. Oh, did that show up in your in your Steam feed? Yes. yes. Adding <laughs> Musaeus as a, as a Steam friend has been one of the better things to happen to me, just because of his lingering Hades achievements he sometimes gets. Like when Loyalty Card was first like being talked about and really starting to get ran before it, like right before it became a uh, category. That was like Musaeus trying the category was his first time interacting with the loyalty card, and I found that hilarious. <laughs> Let's go. Which I think was the case for you as well, wasn't it, Rest? Because you got the achievement like two days after him. It's possible. I honestly <laughs> don't. I know I've done it before, but that was probably before achievements. So the the achievement doesn't tell the whole story. <clears throat> Although we're saying that. You know, certain things will prepare you for certain parts of speedrunning Hades. Um, but then we have weirdos like Musaeus who jumped <laughs> it directly into it after, what was it, like a week of playing? A week yeah. or two weeks, something like that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Is yeah. saw my stream. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> fresh file, let's do that. Yeah. Immediately. Wait. What a category to dive headfirst into for your first like Hades beat category too. Holy I mean, crap. that's that's what I did too. Really? Yeah. I think we have someone else who's doing that too, right? Uh, is it was it Pantaloons? Yeah, Pantaloon, right. who is uh, an exceptional Hollow Knight speedrunner turned Hades fresh file runner. 
Hey, oh, that's egg. I think they're down to what thirty three minutes. Yeah, with the with the first run. First run. Oh wow, mm. yeah, it's really not good. bad. Yeah, I'll I'll be looking forward to verifying their times <laughs> as it goes lower and lower. I'm excited mm-hmm. to see my world record finally have some competition. You know, Bream. <laughs> I can't. Listen, I'm second place. Don't let me know. I can't <laughs> wait <laughs> to watch her risk get bopped out of third or second. Risk. Sorry. Someone pointed it out. I think you're technically third. You're second. What? You're behind Vor's non hell mode, and you're also behind Vor's hell mode. <laughs> no, that's not how this works. <laughs> so you're technically third place behind Vor. Wait, twice. is your hell mode faster than my yes. regular mode? Yeah, yes. you fucking know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. That's a separate. There's not. It's there's actually. Not it's actually like the third fastest ever fresh mile run. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, poor well, you Risk know what? 15. If you get if you get a strong enough build, hell mode is just regular mode. That sounds that's, like a cope to me, brother. It that's, is a cope. I'm coping cope. really hard right now. <laughs> okay. I need to get back into fresh file. That he is third place in fresh file behind Varian Poise. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's not how we that's not how we do the boards, right? Like, I mean, if we had to do it that way, then I'm then we're all like in fiftieth place behind Varim and and Dunk and webs and ananka and 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 everyone else well like, that's that's not how this works well it's not like his hell mode is an obsoleted run right and it's not like his normal fresh it is obsolete it's well, slower no, it's than his regular time can we petition <laughs> to merge the hell mode and non hell mode boards and just make it like a toggle <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm down with that personally right. um Pug. i'll run it by the mods place. later oh. <laughs> yeah Wait, sure. didn't didn't i'm doing it say that he was trying to aim for a uh, hell mode fresh file speed run Maybe. yes i remember yeah definitely that happened Doing and it. He's, he hasn't even done a regular, a regular you're getting run. called out <laughs> where's the time buddy <laughs> where's the time where's that pb <laughs> uh, the the worst part and, and uh, i can't remember under what context i mentioned this to him but like the worst part is when he finishes fresh file hell mode first run he'll have nowhere to submit it like, it, it won't yeah. fresh file boards you can't there's no you can't do hell mode in regular fresh file we have to make another category for it yeah although i guess when we get more people actually doing the run <laughs> hello yeah. audience um <laughs> <laughs> like how you say when the, we get the, more people into the run as if that's an, an inevitability yeah listen I've, I think it's more of when we get more people <laughs> into the run, <laughs> we'll that add it as a subcategory dream. almost certainly. Uh huh. I think Vareem is coping just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think every time, I think every time the hell mode or not hell mode, uh, first run or fresh file has been brought up, you're like, oh, I want, like, I want more, more competition, more gamers, and it just never happens. Like, someone will finish a run, they'll submit it, like, oh, I did it, and then never do it again. What's the poor man dream? And that's the story. Where you get He's... people like me that say they're gonna move on to it and then just never do it. <laughs> Honestly, I enjoy I enjoy grinding uh first run. It's it's not hard. Uh, it, it is hard, I guess, but it's it's not as bad as like resetting in chamber three of Tartarus because because your hammer sucks or something. Yeah. Well, you know, you wanna know why it is a is a comfy experience because you don't have to die to reset. You can just go again. Yep. True. Yeah, you can close out. Super giant, if you're listening, hey, give us a quick restart option. Please. Please. That's gonna have to be a mod. <laughs> yeah. Add it to the bucket list of potential future mods for a potential future modded category in a potential future. <laughs> I think I think that we could legalize a a self kill slash real give up button Look, for yeah. the boards. That'd be super Look, down. Maybe. However, hear me out. It took us until like a couple of weeks ago to fully legalize the colorblind mod. Which, <laughs> which we got there, pretty okay. much full support from the mod team from the moment it was created. Yeah. <laughs> which yeah. I think is a little bit more important of a mod to have legal than the idea of a quick give up which means quick give up will take a while. Well, I don't know. So I know that a lot of folks are getting uh, impatient with 
with Hades, especially given how optimized it's been. Yeah. Like Ananka, Ananka is, I know Webs was slash is, uh, it is, and Dunk, I don't know what Dunk is or, or where he is. Uh, on this, but I know he's coping super hard. Yeah, I'm, like, I've said I'm, this before. Um, may as well throw it on the podcast too. I love Dunk to death. We all know this. Friend of the show, Dunk Zero. Shout outs. Um, I love you, Dunk. But I, I think he's starting to approach a point where he needs the break. I think everyone as a runner eventually reaches that point where they need some form of a break from the game. But I don't know if dunk is the type of person to allow himself to take that break yeah i'd agree with that he has he's the speed run other games he did recently add um a casual hollow knight playthrough to the stream schedule that's good yeah. so so at least there's that yeah that's a good thing that's i, I think as yeah. a runner and as a streamer uh, too you you need to like mix up what you do 100 percent yeah, it's it's hard though, especially when you're known for one thing. Um, if you're a viewer, if you're like a numbers based person, and like mm -hmm. a lot of your satisfaction from streaming comes from numbers, branching out of your main game is like really hard and scary for definitely. A lot of people. It's a scary thing to do. Yeah. Well, yeah, it goes directly against the whole like, I guess declared goal of streaming, which is to get like more viewers. Right, yeah. but at the same time, like you, it, you eventually have to put yourself first, man. It's not. Yeah, absolutely. It's no it's question. not healthy to always like well i mean it's not healthy to like continually or care about that kind of thing you know what i mean eventually you have to step back and think about what's best for me so there is an additional point of context to dunk specifically which is that he i think fairly recently put in his two weeks mm, and yeah, true. he's going to uh don't quote me on this because this is just my understanding, but I think he said he's going to like find some part-time work and then focus the rest of his time on his stream. Yeah. So for yeah. him, the stream is becoming a bit more. Yeah. Of it's a, a very different. Thing that he's uh, on. Absolutely. It's, yeah. So like, very, can very he different. afford to, um, like operate on half the normal viewership because Hades is killing him? I don't know. We'll yeah. we'll see who breaks first. Uh, that is the <laughs> unfortunate part of the grind, though, right? It's yeah. often equated to throwing yourself at a brick wall. And yeah. also, in that sense, something does have to break it eventually, and more often than not, it ain't the wall. Uh... Can we uh, can we enter <laughs> Vorian's hot take segment? Yeah, go for it. Sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, wanna... I didn't know we had this segment, but yeah, I'm yeah, ready yeah. for it. I'm adding it to your, uh, to your podcast. Right. I, think it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a good oh, fit. Perfect. Um... I think that uh, this is like going back to uh, what was mentioned at the start of this when we were talking about um, burnout and the game being optimized and stuff. I mm. actually don't. I don't know if I agree that Hades is all that optimized at the moment. Uh, there's my hot take. No, I would. I I don't think that's a hot take. I would agree with that. Actually, no. I think it's... I think that there's such a rush. People are trying really hard to optimize the current strategies because there's there's like a world record rush because of the way that Hades is structured with all the different weapons and everything, like mm -hmm. everyone wants to have the fastest time, like right this minute, there's not a lot of people doing like hard work on figuring out like what will be fast. Right. Yeah. Like trying out new builds or aspects, you mean? Or even just like, um, like gameplay mechanics, like figuring out, um, like optimal inputs and stuff. I oh, think, man. I think a lot of that is, um, is on is work that hasn't been done mm -hmm. i don't so i agree with you there but as a roguelite i don't know if we're ever gonna get to that point you know what i mean because it when you look at other roguelites like even binding of isaac that has a it, it has a very history like speedrunning scene and it, i think as a roguelite runner you just have to be you have to be flexible and adaptable, right? And that makes it very hard to optimize, like, combat and inputs on a room-to-room -room basis. Definitely, definitely. I mean, the thing is, the yeah. reason why it works... The, the other, one of the other reasons it works this way, besides the, like, world record frenzy, is just that um, because RNG does have an outsized impact on how your run goes, 
Mm -hmm. um you don't get to feel those like moment to moment differences in how your like your inputs mm -hmm. are affecting your your overall speed yeah Um, it's a really hard thing to measure in this game but i think as as this game and as the scene matures i think we're gonna see a lot more of that yeah for sure i think um I think if you're looking for more, yeah, I'm speaking to the audience. Uh, if you're looking for like a more uh, optimized type of gameplay experience, or like a from a viewer experience, um, you're looking for more something like routed or fresh mm-hmm. file, maybe because I think it's a lot easier to definitely optimize oh, yeah, those absolutely. categories. There's like, just way of fewer variables. Yeah, yeah and for sure. that helps a ton. Knowing that you're always going to do this damage as you enter this room and this room is either going to have this set of spawns this set of spawns with this set of spawns uh makes looking for those optimizations a lot easier and mm-hmm. you can also very tangibly see them start to build up as you're going through and putting in time on runs yeah definitely um, i will say the um the the point on uh rng like kind of getting getting in the way of like seeing where the progress is is actually i think a pretty good argument for a modded category because if we're really interested in um like finding what these mechanical optimi- optimizations are stripping out some of the like more bothersome rng for a category where we can s- focus more on the mechanics yeah i think would be really helpful and then once we've spent a lot of time in in modded we can like there's nothing to really say that we we wouldn't like swing back to what is it standard vanilla whatever definitely and i've been an advocate and i've been an advocate for a speedrunning mod in a modded category since long before Mm 1.0 i I think it's um i think it's a pretty important step for for the scene if you like again looking at binding of isaac like i think it's really important yeah there's just a lot of positives to it absolutely um what goes into your ideals a haiti speedrunning mod then reem uh god it's it's a lot so so i personally i would want it to be very very customizable right so i want i want there to be toggles for like whether or not um there are free rooms whether or not there's thanatos sack rng should be but we already have a mod that allows you to kind of like set the sack rng to certain ranges or whatever that uh has been made by shout out museus Mm. um (laughs) so uh i really like fully customizable so that we can come up with rule sets but also um being able to strip as much rng out of the game as possible which is weird because like it's a game that's so rooted in the rng but like the ideal thing would be even to be able to plan a routed run like be able to pick room by room what you got out of every single room before the run even starts is something that would be wild um and i think would help a lot with with um progressing kind of like build strategy as well as as input optimization Mm -hmm. i'd agree with that a lot because at that point you could you could really start to see like the theoretical best time for like any category really yeah Yeah. obviously there's loads of hidden rng that's that's less obvious to to viewers but more obvious to runners like like what mobs spawn and stuff all of that stuff being controllable would be amazing but obviously also very complicated so yeah (laughs) that's my ideal vision but obviously it's hard to execute (laughs) on we're probably gonna have to end up settling for something a little bit short of ideal but of course considering the the unrest of of the yokels i think it'll be most beneficial for the game to get a modded uh modded category up as soon as possible yeah i will say the other downside we have I think we're is, there I, I it's just as much and as excited as, as i am for the prospects and the much talked about like haiti speed mod i the really unfortunate part about it is the sort of weight that's been put on the shoulders of like two yes. three modders and <laughs> yeah that's the really unfortunate side of there not being like a ton of haiti speed modders um mm-hmm. and so like you know poor ella museus i know they love it and i know they love doing it i know they're happy to do it but i also definitely feel for them because it's it's a huge ass to go up to two people and say hey we want this 
long laundry list of features and can you also make sure we can toggle all of them on and off for the most yep. part and also <laughs> can you do these other things and can you just change how enemies spawn in the game altogether <laughs> and can you make it so that way we can pick our chambers but without having to uh you know manip rng in any way it just happens so that way we follow this route it's it, it's a rough ask and again yeah huge shout outs yeah. to elo huge shout outs to museus but the unfortunate 100%. and sort of realistic side is it'll take a while for us to get there because you know we've got two people working on it actively and then we've got people that are like that want to pitch in um but well i say actively i know Ello's on hiatus from it because it he got really frustrated with it much. which truth be told i don't blame him uh, what he was trying mm -hmm. to do seemed really annoying he wanted to work on a uh, predictable enemy spawn implementation but he wanted to keep it closer to like a vanilla experience um which doesn't sound easy uh with the way he was describing things yeah well, but this is with a call all that out. being said oh sorry uh i do think we're we will eventually reach a point where we will see modded stuff, uh, modded categories and things of that nature in the Hades community. And I think we will net be better off for it. Yeah, definitely. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. Which, speaking of stripping away RNG from Hades. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> what a segue. Um, you know, I was going to open up the recording by saying okay we, we're gonna try to do segues without uttering the words <laughs> speaking of speaking no. of speaking of fail. eggs here's why um <laughs> uh whatever wrist, it's tried it's true it works <laughs> wrist myself professor timbo uh museus and dunk zero have all been working behind the scenes you guys have likely seen word of it we're we're looking to get a, uh, a racing series up and running called hyper delivery um and we will it's uh hosted by uh dragon squad esports i believe Shall we mm -hmm. officially say that so. either way we've got an esports org backing it they're smaller they're from ohio but it still adds legitimacy to haiti speed running which is really really cool mm -hmm. um and the idea is you get a 24-hour qualification period. You do your best to jam out your fastest three weapons time in a 24-hour period to get it submitted. And then sort of similar to how Hermes Cup is doing it this time around, we'll pull from a top eight and uh, run a tournament. It should be a Over lot of one fun. Weekend. Yeah. <laughs> one long weekend. Um, and we're going off the beaten path of previous Hades Racing mods. We are really really stripping things down to make it a bit more competitive quote unquote of an experience where luck is less of a factor um always going to be a three sack there will be no more fans as well as no more barges or tiny vermins um all of those have been completely removed if you were to get a uh, say you rolled to get a barge in asphodel that'll be replaced with witches and i don't know what tiny vermin is replaced with but it's I do just know... replaced with another doomstone okay yeah and you you physically cannot get timey vermin as well, which is really good. Yeah, sounds bug. I want to say, uh, t since you mentioned uh, <laughs> this event, um, I, the day it was announced, I had Professor Timbo at me on Twitter <laughs> saying, hey, apply to this thing. And it was literally after, well, we didn't mention it, but it was, it was um, I did announce my quote-unquote Hades retirement after the the speed gaming event haha ha, get fucked losers i'm outie <laughs> um but the day after that timbo added me on twitter he was like hey apply to this thing and i was like no meggies get out <laughs> well webs maybe after maybe since you've announced your retirement you can actually uh like dedicate some time and focus to playing fresh file <laughs> that do you know how retirement works i don't think you do <laughs> it's a different game dog it's Listen, it's, like... I'm sorry, did they change the title from Hades to something else? I'm confused. It's Fresh File. Uh, it's a different game. So it's Fresh File the game now? Um, <laughs> yes. Fresh File the video game uh, by okay. Supergiant Video Games. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's not happening, brother. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, bro. <laughs> we had to try. I predict Web's 2D's retirement will be like a lot of people's retirement, where he steps away for 
a decent while and then comes back and continues to do the thing that he retires from, just not as much as he was, if I had to more estimate and assume. Yeah. No, my plan is, I, I do eventually plan on coming back, but there are a couple key factors um, that I'm looking at to make my comeback. One, I would like some form of speedrunning mod on the boards, because um, I'm very tired of getting cucked by RNG. <laughs> uh... <laughs> And two, I want to I want to meet some more personal goals and uh, like other games, and I want I want to learn yeah. some other runs. So whenever I'm done with that, um, however long that may take me, I'll probably come back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, nice. Right. I I might I might take this approach with Curse of the Dead Gods. Honestly, it's I'm having a lot of fun, and the boards are completely empty. So I might do it. I might. Oh really? I might give uh, Curse of the Dead Gods the Bablo. Treatment. I would watch <laughs> the shit out of those streams. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Let's focus forward. I have no idea how painful it'll be, but <laughs> I, I am having fun with the game, which we can talk about a little bit later. I, I will say, um, my so, so so one fear that I think has been expressed with a speedrun mod um, is that if we remove certain kinds of RNG, the other RNG will just sort of bubble to the surface, mm. and that RNG will um, will become the thing that we focus on next. However, I like consistently have enjoyed doing fresh file where the only real RNG there is is that sack. There is no other room RNG mm -hmm. aside. Well, I guess there's like slight mini boss RNG, but it's so tiny that it might as well not even be there. It's it's super low impact. So I think so 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 given how I feel about fresh file RNG and how populated it is with like really low impact RNG aside from uh, again, like, like the, the sack and the tiny vermin. I'm, I actually think it'll feel really good to be able to play without those large, like high impact single instance RNG. Yeah. Uh, no, I, factors. Like jokes aside, I do agree with that. And I'll, I'll probably never stream it just cause I'm so tired of streaming Hades lately, but <laughs> Um, if yeah. I ever do like want to play the game casually on my own time, I'll, I'll probably do that. However far and few in between those moments may be. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, I think once this comes out, once this episode comes out, the um, the qualifiers for hyper delivery will already be over. It's on the fifth. And this is uh, the twenty eighth yeah. of February, so <laughs> oh, that is super yeah. soon. For someone who frequently complained about us dating episodes, you sure did just put a hard date on it, Mister Thirteen. <laughs> I mean, I've never complained about dating our episodes. I've just like accepted that we're going to date our episodes. I will say, way. as a regular listener to your podcast, I appreciate that you Let's give see. the date of the episode <laughs> the because it gives context. <laughs> exactly. <to some> <laughs> okay. Fantastic. <laughs> Oh, yeah, in any case, that is coming up, and me and Dunk will be commentating it. It's going to be... I hope it's going to be a blast. I love commentating with Dunk. Dunk is a fun guy. Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, yeah. We'll get there. Hope Webs, will you tune in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. I'll watch that for sure. Hell, yeah. Um. So, I guess past... Uh, like, we've already kind of gotten into it. Oh, I just want to kind of talk about what games we're playing um we've talked a little bit about webs's retirement and 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 playing other games and vareem you've been playing not hades games as well right oh definitely yeah i've been doing for the past two weeks it's basically been all hollow knight speedrun learning which has been an absolute blast i'm loving every minute of it how's that going for you what why did you choose hollow knight um, it was something that was actually recommended to me when I was doing my casual playthrough of it a few months back. If you guys might remember some of those yeah, streams. Yeah. Um, you did a lot of those, yeah. Covert Muffin, um, was in my chat and was kind of prodding me to like, <laughs> like, hey, maybe learn the speed run of this game. Uh, so he is um, the Vareem of Hollow Knight, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's accurate. I don't think Muffin's actually done a finished run yet. <laughs> oh, well, well, I... <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Get fucking roasted, covert muffin. But uh, finish a run. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, it was something that was kind of at the back of my mind for a while, and then I saw, um, I'd been, th I'd been thinking about other games to speedrun, I tried a little bit of Celeste, I've been doing, I've been doing all kinds of random, uh, yeah. things just to try and find something to do that I enjoy that isn't Hades speedrunning, so I can kind of have that healthy, healthy balance that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, and, absolutely. um, and then one day, uh, Amber was actually streaming, like, Amber decided to do it as, like, a 12-hour challenge or, or something along those lines nice. to, like, learn um, that speedrun. And so I watched some oh. of that stream, and I was like, yeah, I definitely want to learn this. <laughs> How's it coming along, then, in terms of, like, time? Is it is it a difficult... Would you describe it as a difficult speedrun, or...? Um, probably. It's... I think it's easy to pick up if you already are experienced with the game. Um, there's like there's a couple hard fights. The category, for those that don't know, the category that I've been running is uh, any percent current patch, no major glitches. So um, there's like a few minor glitches. There's a bunch of skips, but mostly it's just like hard combat without very many upgrades because you're trying to go through the game as fast as you can. Mm-hmm. Well, like it essentially boils down to just be good at the game. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> That's fair. Um, just really clean movement um, and good boss fights and stuff. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really fun. I don't know. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Ello's been been doing it a bunch as well. Museus has been learning the route a little bit. <laughs> so wait, it's you're, your saying is you're corrupting a bunch of Hades players to Hollow Knight. Hey man, I mean, is it corruption? <laughs> if anything, I don't tell people what to do. I yeah. just have fun on stream. And uh... <laughs> if anything, he's like the Messiah of Hades. He's saving people, you know, True. <laughs> lifting them out of yeah. Hades. He he comes, and on the seventh day, God said, "Please be happy, Hades runners." <laughs> <laughs> this is this is almost this actually kind of reminds me a little bit of. Maybe we're going through like a vague resurgence of this where Codex Tech happened and mm -hmm. then no one knew what to do and yeah. they sort of took a break. I wonder if I wonder if that is what what's going on, right? Like we're waiting for the Hades mod to finally hit. I don't know. For, the, for, for, on. for me it's it's not like that. I'm not sure what the broader sense. I feel like it, it ultimately yeah. it's very it's very individual, but um mm. for me oh, I, I still love Hades. I still actually have plans to grind out fresh file more. Um I really want to get right. sub twenty one. <laughs> what the fuck? You can't make me more second place. <laughs> <laughs> the third place team. <laughs> True. Um, and and I do I do want to I do want to push all weapons sub one forty. I know in Anke has done a lot of work toward that uh, recently, but like I mean I do want to see that time go down to one thirty nine because I think that'd be hella cool. So um, it's just about making sure that I'm still having fun. So yeah. You know. Sometimes you, know, you gotta take, I think a, Anaka take a break for a too much while. of himself into it. You know what? Yeah, Anaka, Anaka has gone really hard lately. You know what so irks my fucking there's... ass, dude? Is I felt comfy leaving all webs at the time because I was like, well, because my goal was sub 140, and I've been on pace for it like so many fucking times. But I felt comfy leaving because Anaka was still grinding it, and I was like, okay, he'll just get it, and I don't have to fucking do it. And then he takes a break. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> come on. You're the chosen one. <laughs> I passed right, we're, all the here, we're all here praying for Dunk at this point. Okay, poor Dunk, dude. <laughs> God, we can't put that on him. <laughs> yeah, no. I'll, I'll go back to it at some point. It's just, there's, for me, there's there's no rush. There's no rush. I, mm. I don't feel yeah. like an obligation to do anything in Hades speedrunning, like, soon. It'll it'll happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's fair. So we have all these, as, as we said, we have all these new super young runners as, yes. as well. It's crazy. Like, I, I, it's it's so wild thinking about how many new people we have. I didn't even notice it until until you mentioned it. But just they've all trickled in, and now they're here. And yep, yeah. <laughs> now they're getting fast. The time gone? And it's it's. And if we want to do a full on boomer section, I mean, there <laughs> there was a time where you know you and me, Russ, we were one of we were we were two of like what like eight runners <laughs> like yeah basically i mean it was it was pretty scarce real question Varim, is when are you going to come to the incredibly cursed down patched world of uh 
one point three seven routed. <laughs> Dude, I am I am very excited for the day that a uh non down pass <laughs> route is created <laughs> again. I wanted so badly to learn the route. You guys yeah. got you guys got dicked. <laughs> yeah, I I'll let I Paris sort it out eventually. I'm not broken. Well, it led to me being broken, but <laughs> I'm I'm not fully broken. I just I don't know. I you're coping. I'm coping. <laughs> I'll, I'll let Para figure it out on his own time. Love him to death. He's done a lot of work. I really appreciate all the work he put into it and all the things he did just because I asked for them. Uh, that was really really that was a really cool. Uh, sort of experience to have someone going through and almost tailor making a route to things that you wanted to see as a runner. Um, but <laughs> sadly, for some reason. A single change to rare crop kills my fun with the video game. <laughs> and God yeah. damn it, super giant. Here we are. Uh, Again, on the topic of, like, there not being a rush, like, if if a route doesn't end up getting made within the next few months, I'll probably end up doing it myself because yeah, that's I fair. think routed is super cool and I want to see runs of it, so. Mm -hmm. That's fair. If uh, you end up making a route, I'll probably run it. <laughs> and if Para makes a current patch route, I'll probably run that, too, because... I don't know. I fell in love with it. It's it's a painful category to be bad at. It's a painful category to not know <laughs> all of the little quirks that could throw you off route if you're not paying absolute attention. But God, when it all comes together, it's yep. there's there's yeah. nothing else that feels like it in Hades. Dude, I've done my time with Manipt runs. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> Kingdom yeah. Hearts. PP of coming to PC, I'll probably end up uh, borrowing a copy from a good friend uh, <laughs> and of 2.5 and I may have webs 2D some some deep webs and Satan lore for you guys for those that didn't know um, I might not even know this yeah. so I this goes all the way back to pre me knowing the existence of Hades and I was a bright eyed bushy tailed KH2.5 <laughs> vinyl mix <laughs> crit data org learner yeah. there i was learning from a guide that was posted two years ago by a by a young chap named webbins 2d <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like wow this has a lot of info in it i'm struggling with this part let me see how i can get in touch with them so my step one was joining the kingdom hearts 2 speedrun discord and i your noticed first... he's not there yeah your first mistake um, <laughs> <laughs> so from there i get lucky one morning and he's live on twitch and so i say cool he's playing hades and i'm like hey man i really hate to distract from what you're doing uh would you mind answering a really quick question about this and he said yes um and then you know helped me out got me pointed in the right direction but i was a bit more interested in the game he was playing mm. hades uh <laughs> from there i gifted him a couple of subs was promised a data work tutorial that never happened so instead what i'm gonna do is sit him down and force him to be my data org coach teaching me the stuff without having to make a tutorial for it <laughs> apologies about the tutorial dude <laughs> it's fine i get it <laughs> You know Coming it's fucked. From, like, I even, for the same Kingdom Hearts stream. Yeah, you know it's fucked. I even reached out to Spider, being like, "Hey, can I use your footage for this tutorial?" And just never did it. <laughs> yeah, there's some some great. I have I have a little bit of experience with uh, tutorials that never get finished. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Vareen, what I, I think I think like a, maybe a month ago you said, "Oh yeah, I am working on a fresh file guide." I'm like, "Oh cool." Yeah, I was like, I was like oh, I'm like I'm gonna." Originally, I was like, oh, I guess I've got to make a first run guide because if the number one guy won't make it, the number two guy at least has to. Number three. And Vareen messages me. I'm like, oh, cool. But I haven't really asked about it since, and I kind of don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> How's that coming along? Well, you know, funny story. When I was creating the test recording before this, uh, this podcast, I noticed in the folder where Audacity was saving my recordings, uh, mm -hmm. fresh file test. <laughs> that one hasn't been touched in a while. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <sighs> and so we're making good progress. Good to hear. I um, have, I have some, I have an outline, but that's uh, that's not a lot. <laughs> I can <laughs> only an outline is easy. I can only talk so much shit. I hyped up the make guide for four months. 
maybe longer. <laughs> True. <laughs> Look, man, God's just, they take so much effort, man. I wasn't even the one editing mine, and it took a lot of effort, <laughs> dude. Like, God, you got to sit down. You got to record everything. You got to make sure everything sounds right. Let me play that back again. Oh, I don't like how that worded that. I worded that. Let me word this again. And I did it the nightmare mode of not creating a script for mine. Mm. Uh, so I don't it, know why you chose to do that. I dude, literally it out better, in my opinion. Literally the one guide I made, I didn't want to do all that shit. So I just sat down on stream and talked about, hey, this is how you do this. And that's why the the one guide that exists for a 12 minute category is like an hour, hour and a half long. But, <laughs> you know, and that's how I uh, was learning to do the category. I also found out uh pretty much the same day that i had first interacted with webs and he answered my question that the strats were also themselves like two years out of date and there was a completely new route for yeah, the game that's what's um, fucked about that guide it's, so <laughs> for people that don't know whenever i made that guide uh, we were very close to optimizing that category and then uh, this dude that's like hella good at the game we, his name's spider he's like hey guys here's a new fucking route i'm like dude <laughs> come on i just spent an hour of my time making this guide <laughs> I personally. Yeah, so, so we, we okay. talked a little bit about like me getting into Hollow Knight recently, <laughs> but I'm curious what you guys have been playing. So I know about Curse of the Dead Gods for Risk. So what have you been playing, Satan? Uh, I've been playing a lot of Risk of Rain too with uh, Webs, Bright, yeah. Oh and Noah, just like all the all the homies from Webs' Discord. I need to buy it. It's it's good fun. Um, the runs rarely go well. None of us <laughs> outside of like one or two of us are actually like really good at the game. I have a passing knowledge of what I am doing. And I think Webs is, is like two steps beyond that, um, but like Bright picked it up very recently. Maglev has been playing with us, also picked it up very recently. So like the runs don't go well, but the runs not going well is part of what makes them so damn fun. Yeah, Risky's not about good runs. It's about hanging <laughs> it's with the boys. Absolutely, it's about the experience. I've been playing that. Um, I was playing a lot of Rust for a while, but. I don't know. I mean, I want to step away from it. Just the the H came and gone, and I'll, I'll it wait for it. Sounds really to come time back. consuming. It is. It's it's one of those games that like if you're gonna be playing it, it's your main game because you can lose everything you have in the matter of like one night because you got offline raided, so you lose all your shit. That's fun. Got to make sure you, that doesn't happen. You've also got to you know the servers wipe on various schedules the ones i was playing on were weekly so you've got a week to get your stuff do do what you want with all the stuff that you have and then you know you lose it all start again it it asks a lot of you as a player and that's fun when you're up for it but when you're no longer up for it it's no longer fun whatsoever yeah games that are real time locked are a little can be cancer <laughs> yeah it's it turns into a job it, it really does yeah. and shout outs to destiny too Shout out to Destiny 2. Shout out to Ark Survival Evolved. I think Survival yeah. Evolved into a job very quickly. How's um, World of Warcraft going, Brian? <laughs> honestly, it's fine. I've got I've got that going real well for me, honestly. I've I've got I've carved out a good place in my life for that. Where there you go. I like all I do, I attend raid two nights a week, and like every once in a while I'll do some PvP. And like that's it. Nice. <laughs> and I don't do anything else. Nice. But to, is it really a good place if you're playing WoW, though? Dude, the getting to the fun. point <laughs> in any MMO where you're allowed to just raid log and be fine is a great place to be. Yes, yeah. exactly. Maybe maybe that's why I can't like stick with FF14, dude. It's because I've <laughs> never gotten to that fucking point. Yeah, once it goes it's from... 100 hours of grind that you have to do to get to play the game. Yeah, I could yeah. play a roguelite for 1,300 hours, but I can't be fucked to listen to the main story for FF14. That's why you just skip the cutscenes, homie. Dude, I tried doing that. All my friends made fun of me. They were yeah, like, how well, dare you not experience the story? And I'm like, dog, I got you, shit to do. That's when, when you, you shit on them. Turbo virgins for caring about exactly. Final Fantasy XIV's story. <laughs> Fucking turbo nerds. <laughs> Move on with your life. So is that all, that's all you've been playing, Austin? Uh, yeah, balloons here and there, but that's more of like a decompressed game every once in a while. I don't really play it all that often. Yeah, fair, fair. Balloons. Uh, balloons <laughs> Tower Defense 6. Never uh, heard of it. Do you remember like the old uh, Flash-based Tower Defense games with like monkeys throwing darts at balloons? It's that. I'm not sure if I ever 
was there in my life. That's yeah. fair. I only played stick figure <laughs> fighting games. Uh, a man of culture. <laughs> mm. uh, Feel that, brother. Rest in peace, Flash. It's amazing how much ultra violence can be communicated just through stick figures <laughs> punching yeah, each dude. other. Shout outs to Heli Attack 2. Nice. Yeah, nice. Another man of culture. I see you. <laughs> oh. Oh, where's the time gone? Yeah. Am yeah. I allowed to touch on the games I've been playing then? Oh, yeah, and also I started Persona 5 Strikers. What about you, Wes? What have you been playing? Ah, uh, speaking of Persona 5 Strikers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm back on my JRPG bullshit with nice. uh, Strikers. I don't want to touch on the game, like, too, too hard, just because I don't... Yeah, well, for one, I don't want to spoil anything, and for two, I'm only <laughs> 15 hours in. But... Yeah. I'm um, laughing, too. But I don't know about <laughs> you. Game slaps. It's more good Persona music if you like the music from 5. And the combat feels real, real good. Yeah, dude, that's the one thing I wanted to touch on was I was so, su- so surprised because, like, being a Warriors style of game, mm-hmm. I did not think I was going to enjoy the combat that much. But, like, as soon as I touched the game, I thought to myself, wow, I didn't know how much I needed, like, an action RPG version of Persona <laughs> until this day. Yeah, the the combat's real fluid. The The buttons do exactly what you want them to do, and they feel good to press, which is incredibly important for an action game yeah it's um, crazy you you frequently feel like perfectly mobile enough as well which i also think is really really important um dashing mm-hmm. around feels good and your dash is really accessible with a lot of stuff which is really really nice oh absolutely like the combo canceling in that game is very mm-hmm. oh, it's so sick yeah oh, i could jerk that game off for a while and i'm only <laughs> two hours deep <laughs> you know it's you know it's fucked the, the one thing that stops me from like logging back in uh, to it is right now i i just finished like a, a, a dungeon and i know i'm gonna have to sit through like at least an hour yep. or two of cutscenes, and i'm like bruh i just want to play the game hey at least the confidant system is different enough that you're not stressed about true micromanaging every single second you have outside of a palace or else you will miss out on connections Wait, and you will be on? so okay i don't know so, any of this shit so is. in persona 5 right it's it's part jrpg Right? right but it's also part dating sim um right and you you like have 80s. Yes. yeah pretty much <laughs> but it's a little different because like doing a thing it takes up part of your day right mm. and you have a limited number of days where you are playing the game or before the story ends mm-hmm. um and so <laughs> you have to there's also stats for you to grind which affect the dating sim part of it which you also have to use part of your day for and you know you've got to go on dates you got to go talk to people you got to go be you got to go get ramen with ryuji because ryuji's the homie but like <laughs> this is also time i could be spending eating a big burger to get more guts or hitting the batting range <laughs> and it's fun but in the most stressful way yeah, possible <laughs> and if <laughs> Honest to God, the best way to go about it is to look up a guide if you want to get all the Dude. like uh, confidants maxed. Y- you look up a guide and it'll tell you how to spend all of your days. Yeah. Also, the confidant stuff in like gives you bonuses in combat too, and it also gives you access to better items for some people and things like oh, that. Fire emblem support system. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you have to do it too if you want like really good stuff and stronger party members and like more XP, which is really good to have in JRPGs. It's Dude, mess. That. and Strikers doesn't have this. No, no. not at all. They took away all the tedious shit as uh, Sans like anime story yeah <laughs> she got a happy anime story it is yeah. required but like literally every time i've played like a mainline persona game i i set up like a, a fucking google calendar and planned out my whole <laughs> playthrough dude it's, it's stupid it asks so much of you but at the same time it's so rewarding because the music is always so good yeah. and you get the good things for your good party members Ugh. love and hate persona 5 uh yeah. if you want to experience a jrpg give persona 5 a try <laughs> but also look up a confidant guide and uh, do your best to follow it. Absolutely. I actually have, I have very little JRPG experience, like lifetime. Probably for the best. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I don't like JRPGs very much. It's surprising to hear you say it. that because uh, really, yeah, it seems like the type of dumb shit you'd waste time on, Riss. Absolutely. Oh, what? 
when have I ever given you like a this guy plays JRPGs vibe? The second you recommended uh, with a straight face, Katana Guitari. Um, <laughs> okay, that's completely different. Okay, <laughs> it, Not at all. it checks. You'd be amazed at how many uh, boxes they both check. Yeah, I get. But my problem with JRPGs is that there is at least the JRPGs I've played is that they're not that challenging. That's that's my problem. Uh, play. like, I played Final Fantasy. I tried to play Final Fantasy X, and I was just bored out of my mind because the combat was so dumb. Do you play Persona, then? They, no. Uh, the Persona community thrives on difficult shit. Or Shin or, I really want, Yeah, I was about to say, play s &T if you really want to fucking hate yourself. Yeah. Very my struggle with JRPGs, RPGs in general, but... But JRPGs in particular is just like system bloat, where there's just like so mm -hmm. many different systems, and like yeah. you not probably, very many of them actually matter. <laughs> you probably well, I, I will say the systems like in Persona games do matter, but you will probably not enjoy Persona if you do not like complicated and mini systems. Yeah, that is the nice thing is all of them do affect things in some way. Uh, except for, like, working out for more health. That doesn't matter whatsoever. But you don't have to do that anyway. <laughs> Just get to watch Joker do pull-ups. That's fine. Um, uh, this is why I like Darkest Dungeon a lot. Because it's actually challenging. And it has a kind of JRPG-ish system. Mm -hmm. Where it's, like, party-based, menu-based, like, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. But, Dang. like, the party-based, menu-based thing just never, ever grabbed me until Darkest Dungeon. Which is a good game, by the way. And the second one is coming out who knows when. I can't wait. <laughs> Dude, that's why I keep not... Uh, I don't want to talk about games too, too much longer because I'm noticing the time. And I, I don't want to keep everyone too long. But that's the one thing that it stops me from um, playing Darkest Dungeon 1 is I know the sequel's on the horizon. And I'm like, Dude, well, I'll just play the fucking sequel. <laughs> but it keeps not coming out. And I'm like, Dude, what the fuck? It's coming out alongside Hades 2, I think. Fuck. Mm. Right after Half Life Super 3, Giant I'm sure. You think Super Giant will? I mean, we've asked this, and everyone's been clamoring for it. But I'm just curious. Like, do you think Super Giant will actually ever break their tradition of not doing DLC or like uh, follow-ups? I think if they were to ever break it, it would be with Hades. Yeah, yeah. this I also is wouldn't uh, hold my breath for it though. Yes, yeah, no financially it's a no-brainer right so really yeah. it just comes down to will, oh yeah like the willpower of their team and whether they like have the will to do it or the ideas to do it yeah oh i think they would have the ideas just because i think it's i'm not a game developer so you know uh, take what i say with a grain of salt but I, there's just so many things you can do with like an expansion for a roguelite right if you look at hades contemporaries they have so many expansions like i'm looking at you isaac yeah, for sure. Whether well, that's it's, for it's the a best. bit of a different experience with Hades. Sorry to cut you off. Just just because no, 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 of could. the narrative element. Yeah, I guess. It's, it's, so I I would guess like the the difficulty in making an expansion for Hades would be like, okay, well, what's the fucking story here? Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I it's, think like this is such such an off brand game for Supergiant, honestly. Hmm. <laughs> Is it? Uh, I mean, yeah, I like, feel like most of their games have been different enough. I mean, more so in terms of like, like this is for one thing. This is this is a roguelike, which means that there's like a lot of replayability and 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 shit going on, which doesn't seem like at least doesn't feel like it's been something that's really been in their games. I know that there's replayability in like Bastion and Transistor, but it doesn't it doesn't seem like a big part of the game. Yeah. It's like something that you can just do. Like when I finished Transistor, I was like, "Nice, done." Like I can play the game again if I want because there is a new game plus. But that's just it. Like new game plus is just kind of there if you want it. Mm -hmm. I guess now that you mentioned it, most of their games have been at their core RPGs. I get it. you can kind of feel that in a way with Hades just because of the story, but I don't know. I I would agree. It's it. Yeah, it is different enough then. I do think the narrative is the hardest part about <laughs> Hades DLC. Um, I don't think it would be finding a setting, and I don't think it would be, like, level design or what we're doing. I think the why we're doing it would be the hardest part, and I don't know if Supergiant would be willing to compromise on that, like, at all, mm -hmm. uh, truth be told. Because, like, if... I, the obvious answer is, like, Olympus-based stuff, right? Yeah. The, 
you go from you finish your run, you can choose to return to the House of Hades or you know go through Olympus themed levels, right? But you know, one, what does that look like? Two, why are we doing it? It's it. I think it'd be a bit hard to, especially with how great of a story Hades has for a roguelite to be able to get away with something like that. Yeah. There's also there's also the factor you have to consider like when they add new gameplay elements um they spent a long time tuning the balance on Hades um mm -hmm. things are really really good uh balance wise yeah um, i think oh sorry go ahead there's just there's just so many more like interactions like the second even if you had like one more god with like you know a new set of core boons and a few yeah. secondaries and like a legendary and then a whole set of duos like right balancing that with the rest of the game is actually <laughs> pretty difficult yeah. i would agree it, it would be a lot of a lot of work so i feel you on that but to touch more on like um uh for the reasons why we would be doing it we i feel like it wouldn't be too too hard with the with the base they've left us being that zagreus is just doing all this now because hades wants him to like because it's part of his job right he wants him to right. like test out the security of Tartarus or like you know j just getting out so like Hades could just be like hey we got some new we got some new rooms you could check out they could be like alternate paths and uh then the gods could be like fucking hey we know you're doing this new shit let us help you out you know what I mean so I feel like I, I agree the more difficult part would be um, the balancing shit as for the why I, I think they've left enough of a skeleton to build off of that you know what i mean That's fair. honestly if there is a follow-up or a sub or a substantive dlc i don't think that the main character would be zagreus i think it'd have to be someone new um, just because i think it would get like a kind of weird sequelitis feel that no matter how well done it is it might just feel like they're just doing this to make a sequel. It would it would have to be someone different, uh, and it would have to be a whole yeah. bunch of different things. You're, you're talking about a full blown like Hades two, not like a DLC. Yeah, but I'm I'm more talking well, about I like mean, an expansion. Well, yeah, or or something like that. I mean, it depends on what you mean by DLC. I guess it would, yeah, it, it would have to be something separate. I don't think that they would take Zagreus and put him in another um, environment. For the sake of another game, but I could easily see them taking another uh, character from Greek mythology that isn't terribly explored and put them in a different yeah, environment and I tell another story with them. I think the I think the core difference we're talking about is uh, I think there's a difference between like expansion, which is working off what you already got, and like more story mm -hmm. DLC. I think you're more so talking about like story DLC, right? Yeah, well, I mean, the story would also affect the gameplay because if mm -hmm. if you do do a separate person, they shouldn't play the same. Yeah, for sure. That sounds like way isn't more Hollow work. Knight have, <laughs> isn't didn't doesn't Hollow Knight have a is is the new thing out where you play as Hornet? Right? No, the, that's a is, no. That's, that's going to be a full on has, sequel. Yeah, okay, it's a full on right. sequel that has been in the works for forever and. We have not gotten any news yeah. about a release date. <laughs> we got an announcement, gotcha. well, and then COVID fucked everything. So, you know. yeah. nice. Well, if if Supergiant releases a follow up, I think it would be more along those lines than I could like, see a that. DLC. Yeah, definitely. And honestly, this just to quickly revisit Darkest Dungeon. This is actually why I'm quite pleased that it's taken them a long time to put out Darkest Dungeon 2 because it means that they're not just like recycling the same stuff and then putting it somewhere else. Oh yeah, for sure. It's going to be noticeably different and so at least that's that's my hope. Yeah. No, I've uh, always been wait. I've always been like a huge advocate for like studios to take as much time as they need for oh, a yeah, game. Oh yeah, definitely. You you don't want to be CD Project Red like ever. <laughs> yeah. I'm also looking at you Square Enix. <laughs> Uh, Lamel. Uh, they did a good job with Final Fantasy VII. Eh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. I thought it's not the game I was referring to. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I'm oh, looking. Right. Oh, at excuse you. me. I, I guess we're talking about Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at you, Cage Three. That's fair. But to touch more on on FF Seven remake, um, it's got some issues, man. <laughs> 
Actually, I haven't finished it, but I have enjoyed what I've played. I, I don't blame you for not finishing it, because a lot of it is just walking simulator. Yeah. That's my biggest it's complaint. Like, okay, it's not you are fun. also talking to the person whose favorite part of Final Fantasy fourteen was... Not fourteen, uh, 15, excuse me, was... um was being able to drive along the countryside with your homies <laughs> and choose well, the no, radio that's, station. Yeah, no, driving with listen. the boys was fucking hype, dude. Yeah, that's different because that is part, of, so. part of the core gameplay experience is vibing with the boys. <laughs> if you're coming from OG Final Fantasy VII uh, to remake, you can tell it's just padding because they broke it up into s- separate parts and they had to well, make a wait, whole wait, wait, game. Hold on. Like, out of the... Are you... An- are we really are you are we going to go with the idea that Final Fantasy VII original did not also have a bunch of padding? No, I'm not saying it didn't have a bunch of padding. Uh, I'm saying that FF Seven R had to make more padding on top of the padding that was already there. <clears throat> Anyways, okay. fuck you, Square I Enix. I will be paying you sixty dollars for KH Three again, but fuck you. <laughs> well, how about sixty dollars for? Uh... 2.8 how do you feel about that yeah suck my fucking balls i will never <laughs> uh anyway <laughs> are we good on we get on time y'all down to do media now uh we can I feel like we hit that time yeah right, we're for sure. rolling up on it vareem it's like a nice reasonable time Hello. hey buddy how, how you doing <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm ready to do this podcast. I'm pretty excited for it. I think it's going to be a good show. Yeah, Let's go. Yeah, I'm feeling yeah, good. yeah. Well, hey, thanks for coming. Get yeah, the fuck out. Thanks for, thanks for sitting around, vibing out. Where can the people find you? The links will be in the description, but say the words yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find me on Twitch. I'm Vareem. You can find me on YouTube. Same deal. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much it. If you if you think you you're in the know where I am, <laughs> you know where to find me. If you think you're in the wrong place, look for the monkey slash link. There you go. <laughs> Depends on where I you're try. For him. Look, I try to have a unified um, social media presence. Okay, so Did my you? content creation stuff all is under the um, links face from Ocarina of Time banner. <laughs> <laughs> well, then how do you explain Twitter.com being uh, Squirtle? Uh. I, you Wait, may notice you that I haven't used my Twitter.com page in uh, approximately, like, four or five years. You know what? Fair. Why, why are you Bonzi Buddy on Discord? I, I don't even I, I know don't anymore. Think, this isn't fitting your unified uh, social media presence because you have... Well, no, no, no. Cause Cause look, it's for my content. Yeah, it's yeah, for my Discord, content. Okay. Mm, Discord content, content creation, creation persona. But... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Bonzi Buddy is actually just Vareem. That's the that's yeah. the, <laughs> that's Link is the mask the... that Bonzi Buddy wears as yes. Vareem. I gotcha. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was a pleasure having you on. We're gonna walk yeah, you out as coming. we walk the rest of our audience on out. <laughs> that's uh... right. If you came here for gaming content, see you later. All right. Well. We're... Thank you guys for having me. Uh, yeah, for sure. Thanks for coming this was, on. This was a lot of fun. Maybe uh, maybe I'll come back on sometime. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, Paul. Dude, to it. I can't oh, yeah. wait for you to join the ranks of uh, past guests that shit post in this Discord. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Courtney is doing it a lot. Yes. It's a good point. Every, it's not everyone that's been here, but some of the past guests will frequently use our Discord that we use for organization and keeping everything in one place to <laughs> just kind of shit post. Or if you're Courtney, just sort of seize control of the whole operation from under our feet. Yeah. It hasn't she worked hasn't done quite yet. yet, but she's getting there. She's trying. I think she's figuring out the loopholes as we speak. Well, what she doesn't know is that there's nothing to seize control of. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll keep that facade up for as long as possible. Yeah. Anyways, as Vareem walks out, uh, I'm going to take a quick second to go take a piss, too. It's all good. Okay. Wonderful. Right, yeah, yeah thanks. Vareem, thanks for being here. We really, thanks really, really appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. It was uh, it was good. We hit on all kinds of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> have fun on your stream tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I have not decided if I'm doing that. Okay. Slash mm-hmm. this morning. I'm going to have eyeballs on... <laughs> www.twitch.tv forward slash marine. All right. Um, all right. I guess I'll cut my recording. I guess we're yep, done. Cut the recording and you can peace out.
Okay, we'll we'll do that later. Just for yeah. now, just dip out and <laughs> we're still recording. Jeez, Ray's to <laughs> kick him out of the door. He is AFK right now. He is, but the podcast is still going. <laughs> you know, we should be sponsored because this is the perfect time for an ad read. This is. Speaking of, want to sponsor Blood and Talk This and get premium ad read space when Web 2D is taking a piss? Hit us <laughs> up. You can uh, send us an email at bloodandtalkness at gmail.com. Reach out. Oh, I have. Oh, Monkey Man's not gone. I'm, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, there we Welcome go. back, Webs. T.Y., T.Y. Right. Uh, Say, do you want to finish this level of balloons? Or <laughs> what's, yeah, what's I'll, I'll deal? wrap up this Hades run. Um, <laughs> uh, excuse me, yeah, this Hades run. My bad. We're in I, Elysium. I Luck's looking okay. kind of good. Uh, this has been a long Hades run, honestly. Uh, you know, it, it, it happens when you're running all weapons. Um no, no, no. This is three webs because you've only been. This is going to be a third stage. True. That is true. Uh, that explains the time. Ah, damn it. There's the end. Yeah, I think we're done. <laughs> That's unfortunate. God damn All it. All right. <laughs> All right. Poggy's oh, media is. I can't even remember who recommended this movie. <laughs> Did do that. Was it, was it you? Yeah. Okay. It was me. All right. Well, Satan, read us in. Sure. What? Why? How? Why Whomst? and how? Whenst? Well, I personally, uh, I love Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright, I think, makes fantastic movies and does really, mm. really cool stuff um, with the medium. Uh, specifically, he's like super well known for you know Scott Pilgrim, Shaun of the Dead, stuff like mm. that. And I think the thing that really gets my neurons firing about an Edgar Wright movie, it, it's twofold. It's the stuff, it's the way he incorporates music and the soundtrack into, mm -hmm. um, you know, the movie itself, what the characters are doing and things like that. And like how, what the characters are doing can line up to the music, which is very frequently uh, the case in Baby Driver, as well as just the super, super clean transitions. I love Edgar Wright. And that's why, uh, nice. that's why I picked Baby Driver. Mm. Oh, okay. And Webbs, you have watched this movie. <laughs> um, I watched it previously. Um, yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, I will preface, uh, I did not watch it in the two weeks. <laughs> uh, that was allotted to me. Um, one, because I'm lazy. Okay. And two, because <laughs> I'm lazy. Um, there's there's only one <laughs> <laughs> no he's just double lazy yeah but i have seen it previously um i prepped myself with a, t a two minute summary about five That's minutes good. after i woke Poggers. up today so <laughs> yeah what are what are your thoughts of the movie wrist yeah. you mentioned you weren't too much of a yeah. fan and that you could take or leave the film to me previously you didn't go into it why did you fucking hate yeah. this film, and why do you give it a one out of ten? Don't be telling lies about me. Okay, so... <laughs> um, I did not hate this film. I kind of liked it. There... So so the good parts are obviously the, the driving, uh, the music is really fun. Even a lot of the dialogue is really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think... I just don't think it all came together super well it could have been way tighter um i feel like there's a slight lost opportunity for like more incorporation of me like like because baby the main character's name is baby by the way um yes. baby is like the only person who's who listens to music and i feel like the movie would benefit more from more people talking about music um, but just kind of, it's just kind of there. I guess that's that's just one small thing that I would have hoped for, but wasn't uh, <clears throat> happy with the the big glaring thing that really made me kind of eh about it is the story. Mm -hmm. There isn't really an emotional arc at all, um, and what little there is feels really shoehorned in, like baby's romance with. Uh, that waitress is the most like bog standard kind of 
relationship movies movie relationship story thing and it didn't work for me she had no real character uh i i thought their initial conversations were pretty cool but then it just kind of went from that to i'll put my life on the line for you sort of thing and that yeah, was just, she, she I went from uh, nice to meet you to i'm a ride or die real quick yeah. uh, i will say yeah and and kevin spacey also doing that thing was also super weird because for most of the movie he's like this super business hard ass kind of guy mm-hmm. and he even like outright threatened baby's girlfriend if he didn't uh like drive for him and then at the end he's just like yeah i'll basically take a bullet for you i'll fight all these guys with a shotgun um out just out in the open and he gets fucked but like he didn't seem to really mind that and just like i don't know where that came from and 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 when the movie closed out and we got like just five minutes of stuff we didn't need. Like we learned that baby's real name isn't baby, which I guess is <laughs> fair, but it's like, why did we have to spoil that? I guess like it was kind of the, 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 the movie started off kind of mythical where we have this incredible driving sequence and baby is like this mysterious sort of like, but also pretty like good down to earth sort of guy who's just really good at what he does. And he's just trying to do his job. Um, and it took us down to earth, I guess. Like it mm-hmm. started, it started big and then it kind of like became more and more grounded, which I didn't, I, I feel like it should have gotten more and more over the top. Like the baby is a larger than life kind of character, but none of the other characters felt larger than life. The, the world didn't feel like it, um, was constructed properly to hold what uh edgar wright was trying to do we i needed more i wanted more characters who were as wild and whack as as baby um which is kind of what happened in scott pilgrim right because everyone is is fucking crazy uh um and so like all of the crazy dumb shit i mean the characters themselves are pretty simple but like they make kind of make up for it with style and stuff but the characters didn't really have much style uh uh, Mr. Ham did pretty well as the, I guess he's kind of a villain slash the villain. Um, he's pretty cool. Um, but again, they didn't really have much, much going for him. I like the scenes where they were talking about their music, but I think they just needed to go into that. Excuse me. They just needed to go in that a little more. Uh, and we would have had something way tighter than the mm. kind of story mess that we had toward the end. And honestly, I don't even think any of the driving sequences beat how cool the first driving sequence was and i wasn't really like as jazzed about the other ones so it it started off on a on a real nice high and then it went kind of downhill for me it didn't it never really crashed but there were a lot of problems that kind of distracted from what i think was just the raw coolness edgar wright wanted to convey yeah Yeah, that's fair so Um, i'm sorry okay i was just gonna say um I actually, I agree with a lot of your points. I remember um, when I first finished this movie, thinking back after I finished it, and I was like, the way this movie sets itself up to be is like a Tarantino film, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Mm. Baby is very close to a main character that you would see in a Tarantino film. However, in, like, a Tarantino yeah. film, you also have more Tarantino characters uh, mm. to support the main character. Um, and that's one thing this film lacked a lot. So instead of it ending up in more, like, a Tarantino-esque finish, uh, it sort of... It made Baby himself as a character kind of plateau because everyone else was like declining in quality as the movie went on you know what i mean Mm. uh and a lot of that hurts the film as a whole while i do still enjoy it for the things that were previously mentioned like the soundtrack and the Mm -hmm. um yeah the racing scene yeah the driving scenes were pretty cool um uh overall i i I did leave the movie 
uh, thinking there could have been more here. So I agree. Yeah. I agree with you on a lot of points. Could have been more, or there should have been less. Yeah. Either or. It's yeah. hard to say. Um, I think where the movie really, really benefits is just kind of what you had said, Rist, with just all of the cool, badass shit that Edgar Wright wanted to shove into a movie, right? Because <clears throat> there's a lot of really cool stuff. I, I think, you know, there there's some things that are done really, really well, but I think a bigger problem as a whole whole is i think the focus shifted away from the story in order to do those things really really well right Man. um i i it feels like the story was more of a side thought and the main thought was how do we incorporate music into the things baby's doing you got that really cool scene um early on where you know he's walking down the street and like uh he's synced up to the music and he you know yeah, something like in the song the and yeah stuff. is that like was... referenced in like street art behind them and it's it's yeah. all like a really really cool scene that and then fun. and then you have just it's it's a really fun movie i it i mm -hmm. wish there was more to it i wish it was a fun but also deep movie with a cool story but i think it's kind of a little one-dimensional in the sense that it's just kind of fun right yeah you could argue driving sick oh i'm sorry i was just gonna say the driving sick the music's cool transitions are super tight you know the edgar wright is doing the things edgar wright is known for but to a lesser degree because i don't think like in other wright films like rist had said many other characters really hold up to you know the main character being yeah. baby mm -hmm. i think the, i could i think he could make the argument that was wright's intention with the film yeah. maybe because i I don't know. At the end of the day, the more I think back on it, um, this is definitely, for the previously mentioned reasons, uh, this is definitely one of those movies that I will toss on and not think too hard about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's a really fun turn off the brain, watch the cool shit happen, monkey brain likes the music, uh, being cool with the scenes, you know? Yeah. It, it makes it fair. harder to... It. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no. no, no, no worries. I was just going to say, I, I think it does, or movies like this make it hard, or a little harder to uh, judge it objectively as a movie, because um, mm -hmm. people are going to like it for different reasons, um, and if some things don't click with you, then it's, you know, you, then you're not going to enjoy it as much. If you do like uh, entering that mentality of just turning off your brain, looking at the flashing pretty lights, and listening to the banger soundtrack, yeah, this is good for you, but if you're looking for, like, a, a deeper a deeper meaning to the story than this uh, this is a definite miss yeah I think this movie would have benefited from going along the same kind of route that john wick movies go oh. honestly Ooh, it, where you like no spoilers i haven't like, i haven't seen john wick i mean th that's the beauty of john wick it's that there's no real spoilers it's like because there's oh, really? no real story the 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 movie doesn't like force you to look at the story except in like a couple of areas and any story areas are really just John wick. Like John wick has no plans, right? He's just like, <laughs> I have a gun and I know where I have to go and I'm really good at my job. So I just go there. There's no like drama yeah. there. I mean, there's some drama, but it's not like, like the movie is trying to sell you a romance or, <clears throat> or, or something like that because the movie is really just there for us to watch Keanu Reeves yeah. kick some ass. It's, and this movie feels like it was trying to lean into that. Like we're like, you know, we have the driving, we have the music, and we could have gotten other characters who are very much like that, like um, with uh, like 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 with Common in uh, in John Wick Two, where where he's just like fighting John Wick, and it's cool, it's a rivalry, and we don't really need much know much more than that, and yeah. it ends pretty well. Do, do, not a uh, bit of a. Uh, Fuck, I'm having a brain fart, dude. Um, do you do you want to watch like a uh, John Wick for the next one? By the way. Yeah, sure. I'm down. All right, Pop. Love John Wick. Of course. Great movie. That's all. That's all I wanted to say. Great turn off the brain. Watch the Pretty Colors movie. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm Absolutely. Down. I, it, here's a take, and it may sound confusing, but just bear with me, right? Okay. Um, I'm ready. And John Wick got me there. Baby Driver feels very similar to the original Taken where it feels like the purpose is 
sort of John Wick esque, where you're watching this really cool main character do really cool main character things, mm-hmm. right? And John Wilk does it well because it doesn't expect you as an audience to care about the other bullshit. It focuses on the main character doing the cool main character things. That's what people are there for, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Baby Driver is closer to Taken, where you have a really cool main character that's doing these really cool main character things, but they have a bunch of side shit that they want and ask you to care about, almost. Like, it's it's almost expected that you care about Liam Neeson's daughter, and you ex- you're expected to care that he's trying to save her. Not that... When you really are just there to watch Liam Neeson beat up on a bunch of bad guys, right? Yeah. We're here to, we're here to listen to, you know, a really cool soundtrack and watch really really cool driving because it's about a dude who's really good at driving, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah. you have this side love plot where it's characters introduced, they're flirting, suddenly she's willing to absolutely die Cringe. for him, and what feels <laughs> like four days later, right? Yeah. Uh, you've got like threats to baby's roommate, I guess. A Joe, where like foster father? Question fa- mark. That's never explained, but baby just lives with like a really old uh, bl- deaf, guy. It's sw- deaf guy with like you can tell his eyes are starting to go too, right? Yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, you know the baby lives with him, and it's not explained what their connection is. You can just tell they care about each other, and then Kevin Spacey's character like halfway mentions he knows about him as sort of like a nod about you know I know more about you than you think. And we're expected to care, but we don't know what Joe is to Baby at all. Yeah. Um, it's. Uh, well, this, I think this this like all harkens back to. It was just like trying to do too much, right? Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, I think if you strip it down a little more, it, it could have been like a much more enjoyable experience. I don't know. That being said, I do Honestly, still like the movie. But... Oh yeah, no, I I absolutely enjoyed my ride. I had a ton of fun with it. Because it is a fun movie. It just asks a bit more of you than the average fun movie. And the things it's asking of you, it's not doing as well as the fun parts. Mm -hmm. You were going to say something. Yeah, it it really. And and maybe maybe Edgar Wright just really wanted to work with. uh, uh, What's his name again? Jamie Lee Fox, right? Could be. Kevin Spacey and and Mr. Ham and all that. That was it. The start of the show for me, Ansel Ansel Elgord. I'm trying to fuck that man to the moon and back. I feel that. He's a cutie. Wait, what? Who? When? What? Main character, Sorry. baby. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I said it. I've never I, seen him. I don't think. Uh, he played in outside of this. Fuck, what was that other movie he did? It was like his first breakout movie. It was that John Green book. Oh, um, something about stars. The Fault in Our Stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That... I didn't. I didn't watch that movie. It, it was okay. I, I've never watched or read anything by John Green. I'm sure he's an excellent writer. I know I'd hate his stuff. Yeah, also, Adam probably. Lister, Blood and Talkness. Let's go, John Green, friend of the show. Hey, John. <laughs> <laughs> John, I really liked looking for Alaska, except where the ending was dog shit. Thanks. <laughs> John, I've also never consumed any of your media or uh, oh, novels fuck. whatsoever. Am I the only one that's read like his whole catalog? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, that's his whole catalog. <laughs> Holy shit! For the most part, like his older stuff, like looking for Alaska, Fault in Our Stars. Yeah, uh, it's okay. No, I haven't. It it seems it as I said, it just seems like stuff I I, there, I can't explain. I can't even justify it because I have never read it. But it just seems like the sort of stuff that would make me go. Yeah, oh, I will God, say I don't, want, I don't like this world. No, you probably uh, as an adult I wouldn't recommend going back to it. I did read them okay, as a as a. A wee lad, a wee lad. yeah. <laughs> so I think they really hit it. They really hit some spots for me there. But uh, thinking back on it as an adult, I'm like, no, this is stupid. <laughs> I was right. Hear that, John Green? You're stupid. You know, a similar book. I think it holds up a little bit better. But I think I just read it at the right place, right time. And this may be a bit of a take, but perks of being a, of a the perks of being a wallflower is sort of similar yeah. to me in that regard, where. I, it's a coming of age tale, and I was reading it coming of age, right? And, I right. perfect so, place, perfect time to read it. But it's funny you mentioned that um, book because I watched the movie before reading the book, and yeah, one same. thing that I was so disappointed the movie left out is how much the main character just jerks off. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a dude lot. Be beaten. Yeah, dude he's just jerking horny, off and dude. smoking cigarettes like crazy. I, as a teenager, I felt that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
hey, I jerk off and I smoke cigarettes. Dude, sometimes this, at the same time. I am this character. What the fuck? <laughs> How did he know? He's yeah. writing about me. <laughs> nah, the movie version of the main character was like way too clean and yeah, good. <laughs> Bit of a punk bitch, if we're being honest. <laughs> Anyways, you want to move on to Anyways. like numbered yeah, well, numbered scores and shit. Yeah, yeah. sure. What's what's the? Uh, <laughs> let's uh, see. I guess up. Yeah, who starts? Go for it. Who starts? Go for it. You already. Started. Yeah, you can go. Okay, you can start. Um. So yeah, summary. I there's some stuff I really enjoyed. Uh, the driving is cool. Um, I like the incorporation of music. Always appreciate that. I'm glad a lot of TV shows seem uh, TV shows and movies seem to be sort of embracing using songs uh, in like interesting ways yeah um uh, especially in i uh, just what comes to mind is legion uh where the whole thing is basically a music video uh super fucking cool mm-hmm. um so i'm glad to see this this trend appearing in uh this was a 2018 movie right i feel 20, like it was 2018 2017 something like that 2017 okay yeah. not too old um like performances um the writing and the story really uh did me dirty though and unfortunately uh in a movie the writing and the story has to do a lot of heavy work and i think kind of slipped out of its hands i would give this like i i want to say a five but i think it's better than a five and i'm not sure if it's a six either so i'll go with let's say a like a positive six or a positive five whereas like this movie isn't anything super special unfortunately which really sucks to say about an edgar wright movie for me mm-hmm. but you'll still get some edgar rightness you just have to deal with some really dumb bullshit so i'd give this eh, no but we'll, we'll we'll make the leap we'll say six out of ten this is a six out of ten movie this is quite watchable yeah. but i'm not sure if i would recommend it you could you could land Unless on like really a like edgar wright land on like a five and a half i'll do six i'll i'll, okay. I'll commit yeah for sure all right it's my turn bb boys um i'm actually yeah. i'm gonna meet wrist there on the six um because while i did i very much if i'm gonna i'm gonna do two ratings so if you enjoy the things that baby driver does well like the music and the <laughs> Just the music, driving. Right? Yeah, music and the driving. Um, then this is an absolute recommend for you. It, it's still that very Edgar Wright uh, type of directing. Uh, if you like Scott Pilgrim, if you like his other shit, you're gonna enjoy this movie. It'll probably be like an eight out of ten, nine out of ten for you. Um, however, if you do care a little bit about the story, um, would not personally recommend this, and I would probably give it a five um, for those kind of people. My personal. Okay, three ratings. I apologize. <laughs> My personal rating lands at about a six. My six... mind is expanding as I as you yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My personal rating lands at about a six, six and a half. Um, because while I do really enjoy the uh, all the shit that it does, right? Um, I do still care about like story and characters, and while I enjoy uh, Baby as a main character, um, the, I do not care about a lot of the supporting actors. I don't understand their decisions or <laughs> where they ended up as characters. Uh, and that really hurts the movie for me. So about, about six, six and a half is where I'm good. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, I think I'll give it just, just two ratings. I won't, I won't match webs as three. <laughs> Unprecedented um, three ratings. And I, I'd, I'd say if you're... It, my rating of Baby Driver and my likeliness to recommend it to you as a as a person will come down to the type of movie you're wanting to watch. If you're, it, we you know previously mentioned that it for the most part outside of glaring story issues it does the fun stuff really really well. If you're looking for a fun movie that you know the visuals are cool when action is happening. Uh, the music plays a great part into it, and it's very Edgar Wright, and you enjoy Edgar Wright, then I, I definitely give this movie a, a pretty solid, you know, seven and a half. I think it really gets there, um, and I'd be, you know, if if you said you were looking for something fun, I, I think this is a very easy, fun movie to recommend. Mm-hmm. However, 
<laughs> if you're looking for depth in your movies and you you want a story that makes sense, uh, you you want to be able to understand why characters are doing what they're doing. Uh, Jamie Foxx's character Bats don't know why he does any of the things that he does. He just <laughs> yeah, kind of does crazy, them. Man. And he's crazy, he's like a, man. Didn't you hear? No, he's like a Tarantino character, but with none of the good shit. Yeah, he <laughs> he he literally just stays doing shit. And none of it makes sense, yeah. uh, truth be told. <laughs> so if stuff like that annoys you, if, if you want something that has a really sound story, really, really sound writing, then I, I'll probably swing this to a four. Just to, I, I might recommend it if I could talk you into something more fun, but I probably wouldn't recommend this to someone looking for something serious that they can really sink their teeth into. Yeah. And uh, go deep on the analyzing. My personal and rating uh, falls somewhere in between the two. Don't really know where, because I have an enjoyment of you know just, both just types of movies join the six train dog <laughs> sure i'll give it a personal six, 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 six. is my third rating uh, because oh, i fall somewhere weak. in between the two spectrums of only wanting fun movies and only wanting shit i can sink my teeth into so Dude. you know and, and as i as i said this either needed more or less they either needed mm -hmm. to do more with the characters or just like less is more for, for I think some what what Edgar Wright is aiming for here, yeah. which is again see our our John Wick discussion where the characters are like pretty simple, like pretty damn simple, but they do their job and they get us there. Well, you can see our John Wick discussion in two weeks, Poggies. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks for watching yes. the podcast. Get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, and I guess that's our outro. Next Just time, oh words. no no no, you can read your no, actual no, 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 outro. Read the words. Yeah, read I don't want to outro. take it from you. God. What the people can't no actually, eh, eh, no one's here. People laugh. Eh, eh. We'll just read it anyway. Thanks for listening, everyone. This was episode six of Blood and Talkness with our guest Vareem. Unfortunately, the nightmare is never over, and we're certainly all trapped in some kind of infinitely recurring loop where something is terribly wrong and life is infinitely fucked the only significant variable being who's joining us for the next podcast that is our only solace and that uh guest will be ridiculous hat from our well i guess he is our constituent over at uh hidden aspects another hades podcast not speedrunning specific i've also never seen him wear a hat um thanks again to vareem for hanging out with us uh, and you can find his and all of our socials in the description and we will hopefully see you in another two weeks. Bye-bye. Later. Bye. <laughs>